Welcome to lecture 19. In this lecture, we will quantify rate law expressions for enzyme catalyzed reactions. This lecture will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we will define what is a catalyst and examine a simple catalyzed reaction mechanism to determine the rate law expression for the formation of the product. In the second part, we will apply this rate law expression to enzyme kinetics in order to define the michaelis menten rate law expression and analyze actual data using the Lineweaver-Burke plot to determine the relevant constants for the process. A catalyst is a substance that is not consumed by a reaction and offers an alternative reaction pathway whose rate is faster than the uncatalyzed reaction. This second point is illustrated in the figure on the right, where there are two reaction mechanisms plotted according to their energy. The activation energy of the catalyzed pathway, drawn in red, is lower than the uncatalyzed pathway, drawn in black. Therefore, the rate of the catalyzed reaction will be larger. Even though catalysts can have a large influence on reaction rates, they do not modify the change in enthalpy and the Gibbs free energy of the reaction. Finally, because both the catalyzed and uncatalyzed reactions are occurring simultaneously, the overall rate of the reaction with a catalyst is the sum of the uncatalyzed and catalyzed reaction rates. Typically, the catalyzed reaction rate is much, much larger than the uncatalyzed rate, so the uncatalyzed rate is usually ignored. The simplest reaction mechanism involving a catalyst is where a substrate and a catalyst reacts and forms an equilibrium with the substrate catalyst complex. This substrate catalyst complex also reacts to form the product. In the product forming step, the catalyst is regenerated and is ready to form the next substrate catalyst complex. The rate law expression for the formation of product is the rate of change of the concentration of the product with respect to time being equal to the rate constant Kp times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex. So we'll need the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex to quantify the rate of product production. Let's assume that Kp is much, much greater than Kf and Kr. And this is a reasonable assumption given that catalysts are supposed to quickly convert substrates to products. And this only happens after the substrate and catalyst meet. The rate law for the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex can then be expressed using the steady state approximation, meaning the rate of change of the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex with respect to time is equal to Kf times the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the catalyst minus Kr times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex minus Kp times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex, and that's all equal to zero. Solving for the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex means that the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex is equal to Kf over Kr plus Kp, and that's all times the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the catalyst. We will define a new constant, Km, which will be referred to as the composite constant, and it's equal to Kr plus Kp all over Kf. This means that the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex is equal to the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the catalyst all over the composite constant. Now that we have an expression that relates the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex to the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the catalyst, Let's use the conservation of moles to relate it to the initial concentration of the substrate and the initial concentration of the catalyst. So the total number of moles of anything related to the substrate must add to the initial amount of the substrate. This means that the initial concentration of the substrate is equal to the concentration of the substrate plus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex plus the concentration of the product. And if we solve for the concentration of the substrate, this gives the concentration of the substrate being equal to the initial concentration of the substrate minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex minus the concentration of the products. Similarly, the total number of moles of anything related to the catalyst must add to the initial amount of catalyst in the system. So the initial concentration of the catalyst is equal to the concentration of the catalyst plus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex. And solving for the concentration of the catalyst gives 
the concentration of the catalyst is equal to the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex. These two terms will now go into the substrate catalyst rate law expression that we just derived. So the original expression was Km times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex being equal to the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the catalyst. And when we substitute in the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the catalyst, we get the initial concentration of the substrate minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex minus the concentration of the product, and that's all times the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex. If we use the distributive principle to expand the right-hand side, what we get is the composite constant times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex being equal to the initial concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex times the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the concentration of the product times the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the initial concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex plus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex squared plus the concentration of the product times the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex. And if we rearrange and simplify, we get zero being equal to the initial amount of substrate in the system times the initial concentration of catalyst in the system minus the concentration of the product times the initial concentration of the catalyst minus the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex all times the initial concentration of the catalyst plus the initial concentration of the substrate plus the, the composite constant minus the concentration of products. And to this we add a final term being the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex squared. For these types of reactions, we are typically only interested with the rate under steady state conditions which occurs close to the start of the reaction. As a result, two assumptions can be made. The first is the amount of product formed is very small. And the second is that the amount of the intermediate complex is also very small. So the concentration of the product and the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex squared terms can be neglected, as is indicated in the expression. After applying these assumptions, we can rearrange to get the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex is all times the initial concentration of the catalyst plus the initial concentration of the substrate plus the composite catalyst and this is equal to the initial concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst. And if we solve for the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex it gives the initial concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst all over the initial concentration of the catalyst plus the initial concentration of the substrate plus the composite constant. Returning to the product rate law expression, we can now substitute in our value for the concentration of the substrate catalyst complex to get the rate of change of the concentration of the products with respect to time is equal to Kp times the initial concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst all divided by the initial concentration of the catalyst plus the initial concentration of the substrate plus the composite constant. This product rate law expression is a function of only constants and describes the rate of the reaction at the start of the process. To determine the rate constants, we would employ flooding to simplify this rate law expression. Let's examine the initial rate when the initial concentration of the substrate is much, much less than the initial concentration of the catalyst. The rate law expression simplifies since the initial concentration of the catalyst would dominate the addition with the initial concentration of the substrate in the denominator. As a result, we can neglect the initial concentration of the substrate in the denominator, giving the rate being equal to Kp times the original concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst all over the initial concentration of the catalyst plus the composite constant. This expression is first order for the initial concentration of the substrate and zeroth or first order in the initial concentration of the catalyst depending upon its magnitude relative to the composite constant. Typically, this limit is avoided because catalysts are expensive and we can determine the rate constants using the following extreme case. 
In this more common case, the initial concentration of the catalyst is much, much less than the initial concentration of the substrate. In this limit, the initial concentration of the substrate dominates the addition between it and the initial concentration of the catalyst in the denominator. This means that we can ignore the concentration of the catalyst term in the denominator, giving the rate being equal to Kp times the initial concentration of the substrate times the initial concentration of the catalyst, all divided by the initial concentration of the substrate plus the composite constant. This expression is first order in the initial concentration of the catalyst and zeroth or first order in the initial concentration of the substrate depending upon its magnitude relative to the composite constant. In the limit that the initial concentration of the substrate is much, much larger than the composite constant, then the expression is zeroth order in the initial concentration of the substrate. The rate found under these conditions is the maximum possible rate given the initial concentration of the catalyst. A plot of the rate versus the initial concentration of the substrate is illustrated on the left. It shows that initially there is a large increase in the rate as the initial concentration of the substrate grows. This then levels off as the rate reaches the maximum rate for very large initial concentrations of the substrate. In order to fit for the composite constant, the maximum initial rate, otherwise denoted as Vmax, and the rate constants, it is common to plot the data as a double reciprocal plot. This means that we plot the inverse of the rate versus the inverse of the initial substrate concentration. Taking the inverse of the rate law expression, we can rearrange it to form the equation of a line, where the dependent variable is the inverse of the rate, the slope is Km over Vmax, the independent variable is the inverse of the initial concentration of the substrate, and the y-intercept is the inverse of the Vmax. This line is illustrated in the figure on the bottom left. The solid part of the line is what would be plotted. Notice that it doesn't reach the y-axis, as this represents the unphysical condition that the inverse of the initial substrate concentration is zero. The dashed part is an extrapolation of the solid line down to the x-intercept, for the unphysical condition where the inverse of the initial concentration of the substrate is negative. Based on this extrapolation, the x-intercept is a direct measure of the composite constant, and the y-intercept is a direct measure of the maximum rate. The slope of this line is the ratio of the composite constant over the maximum rate.